Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. A shout out to drone enthusiasts everywhere. And as always, a shout out to my friends at the Drone Seekers. Hey, I've got the uh, Femi X8SE out again. Uh, they, they had another firmware update. This time they changed the flight control firmware from uh, 1056F to 1057C. And of course those are just numbers. I looked through all the other firmware. I couldn't see any other firmware numbers that changed. And the change list just said flight control. So what it said was it changed the optimization of the compass calibration. Now whatever that means your guess is as good as mine. Uh, but uh, you know clearly something to do with compass calibration although I have to tell you I have never had any issues with toilet bowling or anything that indicated to me that there was a compass problem uh, with the uh, uh, Femi uh, X8 SE. Uh, I guess I have, now that I think about it, I guess very early on I used to get a compass warning once in a while, but I don't, I don't recall having one of those in a long time. So uh, in any case, evidently it was something that was needed. So what we're going to do is take it up in the air and see if we can see any significant changes in flight characteristics. I kind of doubt we will, but it, whenever there's a, uh, a change in firmware, it's always worth looking at. I thought while we were at it, there's been uh, a lot of speculation about uh, what Femi calls smart track with this bird. Uh, you know, I think DJI calls it active track. It's a follow me mode. There's a lot of different modes that, uh, that people use with these, and Femi calls their smart track. Uh, Al Duran did a recent video where he tried, he had his daughter with him and he tried all different manners of uh, smart track and uh, he got it to work well at times and other times uh, not so good. One of the theories that I've seen presented is that this guy uses uh, some of the processing power from your smartphone for its AI in order to do that smart track following. I'm not a technical guy, so I couldn't tell you if that's true or not. I'm just telling you that I've heard people say that, so so I don't really know. Uh, but I'm flying it with uh, an iPhone XS, so that's got a pretty quick processor in it. So if that's the case, it should be uh, more than up to the job. You know, you guys have seen me uh, on some of my past videos mess around with smart track. Uh, on this thing and with varying degrees of success there's I, I, I can't say that I've ever got it to work perfectly uh, there's times that it wouldn't work at all there were other times that it kind of worked and uh, so we're gonna put it to the test here and understand that these are tests uh, you know if I go into the shade of a tree or something it's because I'm testing the smart track to see what it'll do uh, so anyway that's what we're gonna uh, that's what we're gonna try and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, and uh, hopefully we'll get a good result. Uh, <clears throat> I what what I want to say is I want to applaud Femi for continually improving this drone. Uh, you know, there have been various issues that are well documented over very many different reviewers, uh, but they they have continued to put out new firmware, and uh, I get more confidence in it all the time. It is a really, really fast, powerful drone. When I say fast and powerful, it's very comparable with a Mavic 2 in that regard. Now, you know, there's a lot of other features that the Mavic 2 has that this doesn't, but obviously it costs about four times as much, so it should. Uh, <clears throat> that All that said, let's get it in the air. Let's see if we can see any difference, any changes that that firmware makes, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, it looks like we've got another uh, firmware update for the Femi X8SE. Looks like flight control, optimized data of compass calibration. I think we had that on the last update too. The current flight control is 1056F. We'll see what this uh, takes us up to. Uh, getting the download done right now. The download was successful. So we'll enter the device here. 
And update firmware. Start updating. Real quick download, whatever it is. It's uh, going real fast here. So like I said, the current flight control firmware is 1056F and the camera is 1018B. Uh, once this is done, we'll take a look at those numbers and see what has changed. Almost done here. Update completed. Yeah, so I'm inside the house here. That's why it's not getting uh, a bunch of satellites, but uh, I, I expect it probably would here pretty quick. Yeah, it's uh, it had seven there for a second. So, But let's go in to uh, uh, see if we can look at the firmware versions. And I'm trying to remember where that's at in the menu here. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, firmware update, it's at the very bottom. And yeah, so I'm looking at this, and I'll take a, uh, a quick picture of it on my iPhone here. I like to keep a copy of this so that I can uh, always verify the differences. So, uh, we're current, so it moved us up to 1057C, RC Relay is the same, camera's the same, vision is the same. FC Relay is the same, RC is the same, the ESC is 1016, that's the same, Gimbal is the same, 1018B. Uh, let me uh, check the other ones here. Uh, so Ultrasonic uh, 1009A, that's the same, Battery 1011, that's the same. NFZ is at 1000, that's the same, so uh, no changes to any of that. Uh, so anyway, there you have it. There's the update. Uh, we'll uh, get it out and go for a flight here now, and we'll see. Uh, it, you know, it, it, all it said was it uh, was updating uh, uh, data with the compass calibration. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but uh, we'll see if it changes anything in the flight characteristics. I calibrated the compass, and we are ready to take off. So let's get this bird in the air. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start recording. Recording has started. Just wanted to verify that we are in uh, uh, 4K30. I'm going to stop recording here for a moment. want to reset the balance the white balance to sunny day so white balance is on sunny day that's another thing that's controversial with this bird uh, someday that some people say that when you change the white balance settings it really doesn't make any difference it still stays in automatic and I have to say I have noticed that once in a while too so so I'm not sure anyway uh, we're gonna start video again and I see no reason at this point why we shouldn't take off. We've got 17 satellites. Everything's normal on the drone status. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hit the, uh, the takeoff button on the remote control. So the drone is uh, rising in height there a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can raise the camera. Yeah, I still. Yeah, you're still not gonna be able to see it. Let's uh, let's drop it down a little. There you go. There it's in frame now. Uh, okay. So one of the first things that I like to do is uh, is check our uh, uh, GPS and make sure that our home point, I should say and make sure that the drone knows where its home point is so uh, so we're gonna do a, a kind of a manual droney and uh, we're gonna go reverse and up reverse and up
Okay, my glasses fell off while I did that. I'm looking at our horizon. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit tilted. One of the tricks to straightening your horizon often is to uh, yaw a little bit, which is what I did there. Just a, it, so that looks like it straightened it out. It was a very slight tilt, nothing too bad. Let's uh, let's do a return to home and let's try that uh, the precision landing. Let's see if it'll hit that landing spot. And so we're doing two things here. We're testing while we're at it. We're going to try precision landing, but we're also uh, uh, checking to make sure that the drone knows where its home point is. Let's drop the gimbal down here. Landing pad not detected, but that's typical when it's that high. Let's see if it finds it as it gets lower. <laughs> of course, just as soon as I start uh, filming, ah, this looks landing pad detected. This might be good, guys. Ah, then it lost it. And that's weird that it lost it uh, that low. <laughs> so, of course, a mower goes by just as we're doing this stuff. It's, it's pretty darn close. It says landing pad not detected. But it's gonna hit the pad, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it land. Yeah, and then then at the very end there, it said landing pad is detected, and then landing pad not detected. And then I saw some kind of a compass error there. I don't know what that was. Uh, of course, that could be I had the camera down, which probably wasn't smart upon landing. Uh, Should have had the lens pointed up. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna turn it around. We're gonna take off again. So I'm going to call that a good precision landing. Uh, as you saw, it had the pad, didn't have the pad, had, you know, it went in and out. But ultimately, it landed right on the pad. So I'm going to say we had a good precision landing. Of course, it stops video. We're going to start video again here. We're going to take off. We're going to hit the takeoff button on the app. Auto takeoff. Drop the gimbal just a little bit. Uh, yeah, horizon looks really good right here. Let's get some altitude. Go out there a ways. That's probably enough. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have enough altitude that I know uh, I'm not going to hit any of these uh, trees or anything around here because we're going to try Smart Track. Uh, so so we're up about 87 feet that ought to be let's take it up just close to 100 feet close as we can get here yeah that's pretty darn close uh, and then uh, I'm gonna turn it around we'll go into smart track and uh, we'll see if it can follow me around we're gonna and I'm going to purposely uh, walk in and out of some of the shade and some of these trees and so forth I might be too high. In fact, I suspect I probably am too high for it to, to get me here. Let's just look. We can probably come down an altitude here. You know, discretion is the better part of valor. I just want to make sure that we're not going to, uh, that, that I don't walk it into anything. So anyway, I'm going to walk out. We will have the, uh, uh, the audio will be off the iPhone here. Push the wrong menu there. I need to you click on the little Android looking thing at the bottom, and that takes you into the menu. And Smart Track, it does say that it's beta. So, to be fair here, we need to know that this is beta. So, uh, Trace, I think I can have it walk on uh, either side of me. So, uh, let's give this a try. Huh, it says it's got me. I was a little concerned about the the altitude that we were at. Uh, but here we go. Yeah, no. I, I think my concern was good. So it, 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 it it's weird. It said it had me, but it but it really didn't. And I and I and I'm quite certain that's because I'm just too small, just too far away. Let's bring it in close. I'm just going to have to be careful about what I get near here. So look, even without me doing anything, it caught me. As I, as I got closer, it caught me. I'm walking towards it right now 
to see if it'll back up the drone and it indeed is it's backing the drone right up and I thought that there was a way that you could uh, that you could change the position of the drone in trace maybe that's uh, one of the other ones but look that's a pretty big box uh, but maybe that's part of the secret because it seems to be keeping me in there I'm walking towards this shade on purpose yeah and I walked right out of it it lost me there even before I got into the shade but but that really was not a uh, was not a fair trial I was way too far so we're gonna exit out of that and we're gonna try it again so I should be close enough now let's go into smart track trace and click go there it's got me and this is uh, more typical of what you would expect now the key is going to be we're going to walk through the shade of this tree here and let's see if it can keep me, uh, still keep lock on me. And I'm wearing dark clothes. And I can almost tell it, yeah, it was losing me already. As soon as I got into that dark spot. Yeah, so, I mean, that's just, I think, more than you can expect uh, out of this one. So let's back it up a little bit. Let's, uh, let's go back in there and... Uh, Let's try one of the other versions. So profile, I think that might be the one that you can that you can adjust how it uh, moves around you. And it says it'll trace the target in parallel perspective. So it appears to have me. So that works. Now I know I'm not on uh, rollerblades like Al Duran was or, or uh, running like his uh, lovely young daughter, but uh, uh, you know, fat guy like me is just walking around. Okay, I'm gonna walk through the shade again here. Let's see how, let's see how it handles it. I'm gonna walk through just the very top part of the shade. Hey, it, it stayed with me. Okay, so let's, uh, Let's go through this part. So there I was way more in the shade, but it still kept me. And I'm tr I thought I could push it backwards, but, but I, I think I've done this before and it's pretty clear it, I'm not pushing it backwards in this mode like we did the, the, uh, the other mode. The trace mode, we were able to push it backwards. In profile, we weren't. Now I thought that there was a way in profile that you could adjust. There, I touched the screen again. Yeah, that that uh, kind of messed it up. So we're going to get out of there. So let's back it up again. I'm going to get uh, way out in the uh, more out in the middle of the field here. My iPhone is doing okay with brightness today. A uh, little bit cooler day, so so that's a good thing. Uh, Although it's still, when you're out in this really bright sunlight, it can be difficult. So let's go back in there again. Smart track. Let's try lock. And I, I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the one where it will circle around me. Okay, this is great. So let's, let's give this a try. This is the one may, I probably was thinking of that I can adjust. Yeah, so the drone should move clockwise around me. Now I'm going to get out here to make sure I'm clear of everything before I crank it up. So we're cranking up the speed a little bit now. And in theory, it will uh, do just continue to do a circle around me. Seems to be doing that rather well. So 
this is probably the best experience that I've had uh, with smart track on this drone yet I like this one this one's pretty cool I don't know how it would do with uh, somebody other than a walking pace like me and 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 I've got you know notice the drone is pretty low well we're only up about 19 18 19 feet in the air uh, but it is uh, you know I've got in that trace mode and it's it's walking right around me now what you have to remember is you could walk the drone right into a tree or something so let's let's see if we can let's raise the altitude let's see I'm gonna just stand still while I do it so we're up about 60 feet yeah so it stopped the rotation so let's let's uh, rotate the other way and let's go at a pretty good rate here So I'm up high enough now that's pretty darn cool I'm up high enough now uh, that I'm not so uh, apt to uh, fly into something so I'm gonna watch it real close here as we get towards back towards the picnic shelter Yeah, so I walked myself out from under it. Well, it just says smart track mission completed. I wasn't looking at the FPV screen when that happened, so I'm not sure what happened there. Anyway, I'm going to go back uh, under the shelter here, and we will uh, we'll just fly around here a little bit because uh, I'm interested in uh, the the firmware update. Did we see any changes? So, as you might recall. One of the issues I've had in the past, we're down to 42% battery, so now is the time probably to test some of that stuff out. I am going to go into sport mode. And uh, let's, uh, let's just see, pick up the gimbal just a tad, and let's, uh, and we do have a little bit of a crooked horizon, not bad. Let's go full stick forward. And let's uh, see if we can get, you know, we've had in the past issues with that drone overloaded warning. And nothing there. It was perfect. Let's yaw around here. And that was in sport mode. I didn't happen to look at the speed there. But let's point it back towards us. I'm going to get just a tad more altitude here. And uh, we are going to go full stick forward. And let's see uh, how fast this baby will go. And in fact, let's raise altitude at the same time. Let's really tax those motors. thirty six miles an hour that was pretty good uh, but yeah no uh, no drone overloaded warnings nothing weird like that so that's good and uh, the drone is very stable full tilt again forty miles an hour forty one miles an hour And that was me flipping it around there. Uh, yeah, so it, uh, I'm going to say, you know, whether that had anything to do with this particular uh, firmware upgrade or not, those drone overloaded warnings seem to be a thing of the past. Although, let me add that it's 75 degrees today, so I've flown it on much hotter days than this as well. But that's a good thing. That's great. And by the way, I noticed when I turned away that I had a, I got, I had a little bit, you know, I was pointed directly away from the drone with the controller. And yeah, we had a little bit of uh, change on the controller uh, uh, strength, but uh, that is to be expected. So we're getting down there. We're at 31% battery. Let's, uh, 
Let's just do one more high-speed run here. Let's see how fast we can get this baby going. I don't seem to be able to go as fast this direction. I don't. There's really no wind today. Uh, but yeah, we're down to 29% battery, so let's do a return to home. And it's telling us that, telling us we got a low battery. So, uh, so it's dutifully turning around, and it'll come back here. And let's uh, let's see if we can get another one of those uh, precision landings. I'm going to leave the camera, just leave the camera up this time. We had a great landing that last one. And we still have 27% battery, uh, but I'm no Dustin Dunhill. I, I, I'm not going to push anything. Uh, you know, he's brought it back with like 0% before. Uh, so you probably could. Uh, I just don't see the point of it. Yeah, so we're right up above. Landing pad not detected. And that's typical, you know. It's not until it gets lower that it finds the landing pad. It's pretty darn close. I'm, I'm looking at it here. And you'll see it come into frame here on the Canon camera pretty quick. It's slowing down. Landing pad not detected. Yeah, we're a little bit off. So I, uh, I didn't want it to mow the grass, so I picked it up there. Well, I almost hit the pad there. It was pretty close, but uh, I watched the props. I don't think we mowed any grass. Uh, all right, let me uh, let me get everything shut down here. And uh, what I, one of the things I really love about this drone is it shuts off recording as soon as it lands. That way, you never uh, end up with a file, a video file that is not finished out, therefore corrupted, therefore unplayable. Uh, so it always takes care of this. Uh, I wish Hubson would do that with their drones. Uh, okay, let me get it shut down and we'll do a real quick conclusion. Hey, okay, so we took the Femi X8 SE up today for a test flight after uh, upgrading the uh, firmware to uh, firmware version 1057C uh, that had to do with uh, compass calibration optimization. So before we took off, I calibrated the compass, uh, even though it said that we, our compass calibration was good, I went ahead and calibrated the compass again anyway, it still said it was good. So no issues compass wise, although I have to say I haven't been seeing issues compass wise with this guy, so whatever that firmware update was for, I guess we can say it succeeded because I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't see any problems. Uh, but all of that said, we had a couple of successes uh, today, I think. Uh, so we took it out initially and then tested the return to home. Just want to make sure the bird knew where home was. It's always a good thing to do. Sometimes I forget to do it, but it's a smart thing to do after you take off, hit return to home. Make sure that it knows where its home point is. Uh, anyway, we did that, and I went ahead and let it land to see whether we could get a precision landing out of it. Lo and behold, we did. Now, if you watch the indicator on the screen, the dialog box, it would, it would it alternated between found landing pad, lost landing pad, or landing pad not detected, I should say, and then landing pad detected. But ultimately, it landed on the landing pad. So I'm going to call that a success. And uh, this is on the grass where I don't think I've ever had a precision landing success with this bird. So that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, and then the other thing that there's been a lot of talk about lately is that what, what Femi calls smart track, which is, you know, the follow me mode. 
All the manufacturers have a different name for it. And Femi does say it's in beta. They, they, they're, what they're saying is this is an unfinished product. This is something for you to test and fool around with. Don't expect it to be perfect. So that is understood. Uh, we went out and uh, I tried all three uh, different modes and I'm trying to remember the name of those modes off the top of my head and I can't. The first mode, uh, I, I was able to walk towards the drone and it would put and push it backwards which is what you want it to do because you want it to keep you in that same length. And the other one uh, is where it's supposed to follow you uh, from the side. We were successful with that one too. It followed me around uh, and even I, I walked through the shade a couple times and it followed me through the shade of a couple trees, which is a good thing. Uh, I will say one of my first tests, I had the drone too high up and I was too small and it, it, it kind of had me, but, but ultimately didn't. So, you know, when you're that far off, uh, that's also to be expected. But I always like to, one of the things that you have to be careful with whenever you have your drone in any kind of automated mode is that it will, uh, th there is no obstacle avoidance on this drone. So potentially you could back the drone into something or move it sideways into a tree or whatever. So you always have to be aware of that. Uh, the last mode, gosh, I can't think of the name of it, but what you can have it do is you, is you, uh, you have the drone, uh, it's, it's, it's got you centered, and then you can set it to circle you either clockwise or counterclockwise, and we tried that, and it worked perfectly. Uh, the, I, I, I was worried about, I had it at a fairly low altitude, about 19 feet high, and had I were, walked towards one of these trees or something, obviously the drone, it would have circled and gone and right into a tree. So you have to be aware of that. So I thought, well, let's just see if we can raise some altitude. And we went up pretty darn high, high enough that it would have missed all these trees and everything around here. And it still had me and circled me till, uh, I, 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 as I was walking back towards it, I wasn't looking at the FPV screen at the time, so I didn't see what it gave for a dialog box, but it just stopped. So maybe there's a time limit on how long it'll do that. I, I don't know, but it just it, it just stopped and got out of the mode. Either that or I, I walked out from under what it could look at. I, I don't know for certain. Uh, but I'm still saying that uh, that it, it was successful. And I think in a limited way, uh, you, you ha can make those things work uh, with this bird. And I'm sure that they'll continue to work on it and continue to improve it. So we have that to look forward to. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, oh, I guess I should also say we also kind of went full tilt back and forth. I put it in sport mode. Uh, I wanted to see if we could uh, recreate that drone overloaded warning that we've had in the past, understanding that it's a cooler day than this in the middle of summer when it was 95 degrees out. It's about 75 degrees or so out here today, but we still went full tilt and uh, did not get any kind, any of those kind of warnings, uh, even in sport mode. So I, I think that's part of the things that they're working on and have improved. Uh, so anyway, all good. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. Uh, it, I had a lot of fun making this video and trying this stuff out. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. And hey, we'll see you on the next one. Hey, what we got here, guys, is the Femi X8 SE. Pretty cool drone for the money. See ya.